Listed and rookie listed player who played a lot of lot of games for the Benio Bombers. He'll be up in the ruck against big Jason Laycock, who's back for the Bombers. So it should be an absolute cracker. The umpire holds the ball up in the air. We're ready to go. The first bounce underway. Round number eight of VFL action. Coburg Tigers take on the Bendigo Bombers. So up in the air it goes. Laycock favoured by the bounce. Does well. Gets the tech down. And Ramanaskis gets the ball out of the centre. Big kick. 15, 20 metres out from goal. Target down there. Nearly taking the mark. Bell Chambers not paid. He thought he had it. Umpire said play on. Goes to ground level now. Plenty of numbers around the wall. A quick snap around the corner. Might have been Bell Chambers again on the left foot. I think he's kicked it. He has. A great goal there. Big Tom Bell Chambers for the Bendigo Bombers inside the first 30 seconds. Gets the first goal. There's a runner on now. Breaking the lines well is McHale. And again, goes to the right half forward flank. Finds his uh, teammate there in Tivendale. Takes the mark about 50 out. Hemmed in on the boundary. Runs around on that left foot. Goes for goal. Drops short to the goal. Oh! Massive fly and a massive leap. And taken is Daniel Connors. And he plays on quickly and kicks the Coburg's first goal. What a sensational fly and mark. And that was just brilliant play in the goal square. He had the sit and the flight. His target goes across now to McGinn, trying to go off the ground. Needs some support and got it. The Bendigo Bombers start the build. Kick towards centre half forward. Big pack of players. The fist comes to the front. Bendigo with a chance here, needing a handball out wide. They've done that. 30 metres from goal. The snap on the left boot is not too bad at all. It's a great one. Josh Powell gets the goal. Gets the Bombers back to lead. They go to two straight 12. And Coburg 117. And towards Horn, running from the half back flank. Horn goes into Polo. Polo handballs out wide. Finds his teammate in Tivendale. Tivendale goes to centre forward and spots up a beautiful pass there. And coming out to take a nice mark is Polak. Polak plays on quickly, goes back to Tivendale. In minutes, first term, and he comes. Tivendale, can he get the goal? He can. Brilliant kick. No doubt about that. Hemmed in on the boundary line, the right half forward flank. Be a free kick to Polak. Polak goes short into the centre of the ground. Spots up his target there. Good mark by Shelton. Wants to give it off. Ends up booting it to Sanar Ford himself. Big pack emerges. Players go up. Good bit of roving work done there by Caruso. He handballs in board. A short kick and a great mark taken in the right forward pocket for the Tigers. First term. In he comes now. Mitch Morton, the young gun from the Tigers, goes in and kicks a goal. Coburg take the league back. Three goals, one. Goes to Morton. Morton spots a player on centre wing. It's a one-on-one, -on -one though, and a nice bit of play for Bendigo and chopping it off there. Back with the flight of the ball is Pears. Pears. He uh, plays on now, takes a bounce, centre wing, broadcast side of the ground, goes to the left half forward flank, coming out and taking a strong marks, Laycock. That was a brilliant bit of play by the big fella. He was just too, too big, too much strength. No one is taking a mark. Right now. In the first quarter, a slow and deliberate approach, goes to about 51 metres. It's long, it's strong, it's straight. It's a goal. It's a beautiful goal from Laycock there. Good leadership from the big boy. Bristol, and he takes it very nicely just inside the boundary line. Right at true centre wing, goes to the right half forward flank. Weeks, come, Weeks comes out and takes a nice strong mark. About two metres in front of, uh, inside the boundary line. And there's the siren for quarter time. He's not going to take a shot at goal. A little bit too far out. But the Bendigo Bombers, they'll be happy. Coach Adrian Hickmont, Hickmont with what they've produced here in this first term. They lead three goals, 5-23. The Coburg Tigers, three goals, 1-19. Nine, Let's have a look at the goal kickers for Bendigo with this crowd that he's seeing in through the gates here. It's a sensational day for footy. The umpire holds the ball up in the air. Second quarter underway on double X, 16-11 AM. You're with Peter Rothorn. So the umpire, well, put the footy back into play. And up they go. Laycock and Cartledge. The tap comes down. Bendigo with the numbers there, wrapped up in the tackle. And the tackle on that occasion being laid by Collins. Yeah, it was McGinn, though, and uh, there will be a free kick and taken away by the Coburg Tigers. They look to rebound. So they play the advantage. The ball in the centre of the ground with Howard again. Has one bounce, looking for forward targets. There's Mitch Morton on the lead. He's too busy bouncing the ball. He's missed that out. Now it comes back. Morton, a oh. chance here on the second attempt. Good defence from Bendigo. Ball taken the ground down there. Play on the call on Flaherty. Ball still there. Morton working hard. Going back in there is Caruso. Maybe taken high. That's the way umpire's seen it. Front by three points, Coburg. Big kick here. So 20 metres out, no angle to speak of. We've seen plenty missed at that end, but not by Caruso. He kicks the goal, he gives the Coburg Tigers a lead. They move on a 4-2-26, Bendigo 3-5-23 at the same Coburg, the home crowd waiting for their Tigers to turn it on. Out of the pack there comes Caruso. He's uh, handball forward, ends up with Jackson. Jackson's flying shot on goal, goes over the boundary line, out of play. And it'll be a free kick to the Bendigo Bombers.
Got a lead here, should go into the centre to Graham. That's where he's headed. Oh, it's nearly chopped off. Weeks got there first. Ball comes to ground. He'll do his own roving. Get the handball across there to Geary. Kick now, up and under to the top of the square. Oh, oh, the big Wake man. Off. Had the big sit. The kick was a beauty. It favoured him. He's that just shows he's walking into goal again. And he's... If he misses this. Oh, in comes Laycock, puts it onto <laughs> Bell Street, the goal. 4 7, a 31, a Bendigo. Coburg, a 4 4, 28. So Bendigo chop it off with some good pressure. Skip wears under pressure, gets a handball away. And beautifully kicked there by Bell Chambers. Up. Oh! oh! Take the mark on this occasion. Comes to ground, Coburg with the numbers, a chance to set up. Shelton, the architect here, through the centre of the ground. Kick down towards Caruso, judges it beautifully, takes the mark, hits the ground running 30 metres out, left foot, goal! He worked for the man there. He uh, did well, young uh, Caruso against Holmes. Holmes finds Pollack on a sharp lead. He takes the mark about 50 out. He looks to give it off and a good bit of running play. Running into an open goal and sliding one through for two and a minute to the Tigers. Brilliant bit of play there. And it uh, looks Tivendale. like Tivendale's in Melbourne leading by a goal at the MCG. 33 plays, 27. And uh, Brisbane all over the uh, Saints at the Gabba by 57 points. That's the routine training goal. Back into play. And the Bendigo Bombers have kicked a goal from the... Uh, from the kick in and they go on to they get back to within four points now the Bendigo Bombers they move on to five goals seven thirty seven they trail the Coburg Tigers six goal five forty one in by Tristan Cartley comes through can't take the ball clearly here come Bendigo again the handball from Flarty does well Sets up the running Skipworth. Kicks to half forward. Defensive ball is okay. Skipworth kept running. Crashes the pack. 40 out. Right boot. Kicks a goal. Tremendous goal. Hayden Skipworth gives him back the lead. How good a bit of play was that from the Bendigo Bombers. Skipworth again with good hands. Becoming a very good player. The kick towards centre half forward. Looking for Bristow. Over his head. He'll run onto it. Needs some support. Oh. Oh. Flips the tackle. 30 from goal. Right boot. Lovely. Kicks it. Excellent work from the Bendigo Bombers there. Number 19. Young Bristow comes through and kicks his... Goal. AM double X Sunday afternoon VFL footy round number eight. We've got a cracker, no doubt about that. The Bombers lead by eight points. They look to go forward again through Ramanaskis. He breaks a tackle, runs within 60, goes long to the square. One out. Can he take the mark? He can. Brilliant play, Bell Chambers. A good show of the way Essendon's game plan is in both their seniors and their reserves. And he comes and puts it through. Brilliant bit of play there by the Bendigo Bombers. Pressure from uh, Bendigo there defensively just to make sure there was not one clear possession as the ball comes Ooh. back in a play chopped off there. The kick wasn't great from Skipworth. A bit lazy, only off one step. And getting across and putting a touch in there with Pollock to send the ball to the boundary line. Around the grounds at the MCG, Melbourne by 13 points over Hawthorne and Brisbane 63-point winners against St Kilda. So away we go here, ball slipped back into play, running on to the back of the pack, Carnell left foot from 25 metres across the body goal, the steady of the Coburg Tigers needed, 7-6-48, Bendigo, 8-8-56, five out from the goal, a pack of players, no one takes the mark, who's at the back, it's all Bendigo, Atkinson. good roving by Atkinson, gets the kick away, weeks the target, maybe in fringe there, the umpire said not, just to the ball, the siren goes, and a good and at half time the Bendigo Bombers 8-8-56 lead the Coburg Tigers 7-6-48 by 8 points they were 4 points up at quarter time they doubled that lead here's Zach Harvey on double X football with the goal kickers yeah well the Bendigo Bombers about halfway through that second term just turned it on and kicked 4 in a row and uh, got a nice lead good afternoon hi just the bread and milk thanks that's 5.50 thank you and can I have something to put those in that will injure our marine life clog our drains and landfill adding to over 6 billion other plastic bags used every year that aren't recycled. It worth uh, tremendous and the Ramanaskis as well and that was really the difference and they've got a couple of good targets. Here. And Laycock who each kicked a goal that quarter so that's where they should win Third it. Third quarter underway. The arm wrestle continues. Laycock versus Cartledge. Cartledge wins this one down convincingly. He follows up his own ball. Handball back though. Hacked out of the pack there by Bo for the Bombers. Uh, taken and uh, taken by the Coburg Tigers. It was wrapped up. And Just chips it over the top. Kicks poor. Wasn't 15 anyway. Play on the call. Charging through with the Bombers. Here's the kick now out towards wing. I'll take it out of the market contest. And that's a free kick to Benigo. Play on the call. Here they come. They need a target. Bell Chambers running hard to push back. Gets back there. One hand. Oh, oh, beautiful. Beautiful, mark beautiful mark over Sylvester. It was a very... Above his head. A bit like the Harland. Wave trotters there. Mm -hmm. Needs to finish though. This is going to cost them dearly, I think, if they can't convert. In comes Bell Chambers. Leans back on the kick and no, it's a goal. Safe. 
Lovely so, goal great there. goal Bill there, Bill Chambers. He's kicked three now, one in every quarter. And the umpire will bring it back into play. 40 out from the Coburg goal. Laycock wins the tap, though. Needs some support at ground level. Coburg with the numbers. Can't get it clear. Caruso in there. Eventually it's shoveled out by hand. A quick snapshot around the body. Oh. From Christian Garley to the ripper. <laughs> Off one step from 35 <laughs> metres. Kicks a badly metre goal for Coburg. He'll look to drive the Tigers into attack. They're trailing by 10 points. Goes to centre half forward. Coming out and taking a mark as, um, is uh, Graham. Angus Graham. He uh, goes to the right for pocket. Morton's the target. But taking a mark in front of him is uh, it looks like Caruso. Bendigo really have to put it on the board to make him get to punish him, boys. And he um, comes now, Nate Caruso, to bring the margin back to within four points. He kicks truly, Nate Caruso. Pretty easy there, the Tigers. The he was in a paddock by himself then. Oh, he wants to sell the dummy, does so, because he knows oh. he's too far out. Handball tries to get back to himself, <laughs> kicks it off the ground. Here's Caruso around the body and kicks a goal. <laughs> <laughs> Against each other, there'll be a secondary bounce now in the centre of ABD Group Stadium. Ball goes up, taken away by Collins, handballs back towards Graham. He goes to full forward now, and there's been a free kick off the ball. And hooker off on coming weeks, and also Williams. Coming in now, and kicking the goal. Brilliant bit of play by Polak. Side centre wing, Polo takes a bounce, goes to take a second, Ramanaska stops him, goes by hand, back in board to Cunnell, he chips quickly to the right, half forward flank, finds Morton, Morton plays on quickly, goes to the top of the square, players fly, big mark taken by McGuan, and he will go back from directly in front, 15 metres out. Up the field, that was very smart play by him. Um. In comes McGuan now, directly in front, has no problems with this one at all. He, he kicks the 12th goal of the afternoon by the Coburg free kick. So the handball across here. Here they build again. The kick from Carnell's not bad on the left foot to half forward. Good mark, handball to Mitch Morton. The mark was by Hughes. Mitch Morton, the up and under to the top of the goal square, running back with a fly to the ball. Oh, superior judgment by Pollock. Kicks the goal from the goal square. And in the blink of an eye, Coburg has now slipped out to a 19 point lead. Two out wide. Takes the mark on the wing. has got plenty of space to work in. Needs to find a target. Has two bounces. They're coming off the interchange bench at great rates. Goes to the back. Bell Chambers works to the front. Ball hits the ground. Running onto it is Horn there for Coburg. Oh. Driven into the ground. Like he's umpire said that's good. No, he didn't need to pay the free kick as he should have. Kicks him in it and he does. Takes a nice mark, Andy Collins. Goes into the centre of the ground. Spots up a player in, uh, in Tivendale. Tivendale runs to within 50. Goes to the goal square. And mark taken back there. Is it Little? Is it uh, Little or Morton? I'm not sure which one. He's uh, passed on quickly, though. Play on the call. Kicking a goal was Nate Caruso. He's got goal number two. Good bit of opportunistic play down there by the Coburg Tigers. The kick to the top of the square again. Defensive fist from Michael is a good one. Finds a teammate out there in Holmes. Got some support. Bendigo will run it out. Handball will finish out there with Kamiri. He'll go wider again. Out to Atkinson. The ball needs to sit. Hasn't got time to work it out. Now comes Coughlin. Back to him. Handball inside the beauty. Finds Kamiri. On the right boot from 40 metres and closing and kicks a goal. Good footy there from Bendigo. Exactly what Bendigo needed then. They just Caruso, his left foot goes to centre half four, goes to his brother in fort. Tard, good bit of roving there by Liddell. Comes across the front of the pack, kicks to the left forward pocket. Picked up nicely there out by Hughes. Kick towards goal. It's bounced over the top of uh, Piers and running in and kicking a goal is Polak. And uh, he goes through for, a, uh, for his third goal. Back now, only two point lead to the Demons. Back here at ADB Group Oval, we've got uh, the Coburg Tigers leading as the free goal Tigers. Scored. So the Coburg Tigers 15 goals, 9 99. The Bendigo Bombers 10 goals, 14 74. And then run through the lines, they get easy possessions. He'll be uh, wanting to be make sure that they stick to the basics. Not so much worried about the scoreboard, I think, but they can certainly still win it. They just need to get back into it. Final term about to get underway here. ADB Group Stadium here in Coburg. Big home crowd, willing their home team home today. They're 25 points up. They go forwards from the kick out through cartilage. Ramanaskis takes it away from the Bombers. Handballs out wide there to Holmes. Holmes goes to the right half forward flank. Weeks and McGuan battle for the ball. It's a loose one. Uh, fisted on there by Weeks, but mopped up nicely by Coburg in defence, and it goes over the boundary line. And out of play and will be a free kick from the resulting ball up, and it will go Coburg's way.
and uh, the player to take it out there will, uh, it was against Skipworth, I think. They had a bit of a how you doing there on the pack, under the pack, and so there's been meters. a 50 metre penalty as well. So, so in he comes now, about 45 degree angle, 40 metres out to ice the game, and he does a brilliant bit of play there. Player running through his beauty. Slips the tackle. Now slips the handball across to his mate McGinn. He kept running. He kicks the beauty inside the forward 45. He'll need his best effort. He just runs through the 50 metre paint now and kicks it. The big up and under. Has it got the legs? It, it has. has. It's got the legs and it's got the accuracy. It's a goal. Of it. He'll be looking for a lead. Bell Chambers is down there. He goes across the ground to the outer side now. Mark taken by McGinn. He goes to the right half forward Laycock. flank. Laycox the target. He comes out and takes a long searching lead. Own deliberate approach to get the score back to the, the lead, to, uh, the deficit back to within 19 points. In he comes, in and under, and straight. That's and the Bombers that is are still beauty. alive. No doubt about that. The Bendigo Bombers, they move on to 12 goals, 14, uh, 95, and they. They uh, trail the Coburg Tigers, 16 goals, 9, 105, goal number 3 for Laycock. With 30 out, he's tackled strongly, good tackle there by Holmes of the Bombers. A uh, good bit of fighting play out there as Bell Chambers, out of defence now, but it's a Coburg. free kick. With four goal margin, in comes Fort Caruso and kicks truly. The home crowd loves it here at AD, ABD Group Stadium, no out of the pack, gives the hands on to Tivendale, he goes to the top of the square, up goes Morton and takes, no, he can't take the ripper, Polak comes down, good bit of roving, snaps and goals, brilliant bit of play there, I thought they were going to pay Morton's big mark and big fly, but go forward again, take a bounce, the handball's over the top, finds Shelton, Shelton goes by hand in turn to Caruso, Caruso runs to within 30, looks for goal number three, but uh, he drops short and our COVID Tigers have won, so in comes Lynch now, uh, from 15 metres out, directly in front, and puts it through. No worries about that. That's his first for the afternoon. Now, can they get a late one? The Bendigo Bombers, as uh, we go to the 17-minute mark of the final term. Quick kick out of the pack towards the goal line, and standing there and chipping it over is Shannon Geary. So they've got goal number 13, Bendigo. They move on. To been a few little indiscretions like that. Tigers go forward. Morton's the target, and he takes it. Comes out from a strong lead and takes it about 40 metres out. And in he comes now. He's about 55 metres out. A very slow and deliberate approach. Walks to within 50. A couple of jogs and puts it straight through. 20 goals on the board for Coburg. They move on to 20 goals, 12, 132. They lead Bendigo, 13 goals, 16, 94. We've been playing. Our handball comes out wide. Holmes goes to kick around the corner, but it'll be turned back again by Carnell. Keen to play on, and why not? Because Timondale's on the lead, and will mark a 40 metres out on a 45-degree angle. And implemented, and but the fourth quarter is... Uh, <laughs> Have have They've the really faded, haven't they? Mm. Here comes Tivendale on the left foot. The kick. Oh, he's a goal. <laughs> oh, Greg Tivendale. Just caps off a very good day's work. Get some fires on the whole fans and leaves now. Bought himself a bit of trouble. Kept composure, did well, got it out the charter. His handball misses the target. He has to go back and fix it up. Oh, they're being besieged here in the final throw. Here's Tivendale from 42 metres off the step left foot. Oh, Greg Tivendale. There's class when you need it to make your pay and he did kick his fourth goal and the scoreboard working overtime now Coburg on Williams takes it handballs towards Coglin. Coglin goes back finds Skipworth Skipworth chip kick to the left half the and there's the side and the Coburg win four in a row with an emphatic victory here today by 51 points against the Bendigo Bombers the Bendigo Bombers to even stay in with that game they just pushed away they, they fell off the, the task a little bit and Coburg took advantage of that and ran away with the game. And Peter Rosenthal at uh, the Benigo Bombers, they fought hard for the first half but it was always going to be tough here today and uh, it proved to be that way. Yeah, just too focused on the scoreboard at the end of the day because they don't have justice to their effort, particularly for the three quarters. But they just need to keep believing, keep persisting and uh, you know, they'll get better with each. Every minute they spend on the ground they'll be learning something and improving. So very, very confident and capable win by the KB Tigers who just ground the opposition out. All... So how can you help take your used cartridges to participating retail outlets such as Australia Post and Office Works?
It's so easy to recycle your cartridges for Planet Ark. Still waiting for the umpires, still waiting for Hyde to have his shot at goal. They obviously have to wait for the stretched player to leave the arena because it's taking... He's obviously he's just coming around the boundary line in front of us now. It actually looks like Kane Pettifer. Mm, could be. Uh, same sort of hairstyle. Keep your eyes on him, Maddie, so we can work out who it is. He's coming below us any moment now. And I think you're right on the arena call there, Dan. And it looks like something possibly to do with the, uh, with the leg, maybe. Is it? Or is it you're yeah, doing taking him very, very slowly, very cautiously. Heartbreaking game, this game of ours, AFL football's horn. Finally comes in to have he, make that hide, to have his shot at the goal. And he's made it worth the wait, Hyde. He's put it through. The Tigers needed that one. Long to the top of the goal square. Oh, and the one-handed mark attempted down in the pocket. Play on to the umpire. Josh Hill up and under for Williamstown towards Caruso. And coming over the top and taking the mark was Connors, 25 metres out from goal. In that situation, you probably know he best to, to hit the ball out of bounds. So he goes short, and it goes to Cartledge on the half volley, picks it up, snaps on the left boot, and he's kicked it straight through the middle. The big Oberg underground handball was terrible in the end. Picking it up and trying to run away was big Sammy Reid and went short and found big Jared Bowman who has his second chance to kick a goal, goes off one step quickly towards the face of goal. He's got it. He's kicked that goal from 55 metres off one step. Certainly didn't. They're doing that a bit mad, aren't they? Yeah, they are. Just overusing the footy. And, oh, great steal taken away. And kick comes forward inside 50 for Williamstown. Oh. Best position. Now, man, at ground level, well kicking done. a banana and putting it through for Williamstown. And it's Callum Urch. So everything going their way at the moment. The boys are a bit bemused up here in the box, but young Fort Caruso's got it at 50, and he has a chance to go inside. And Caruso does that and finds a teammate unmarked as well between the left-hand goal post and the behind post. Let's see if Graham allows for that wind. On the right boot, he does. It was pretty much straight off the boot. He decided to go for the straight well, power kick, and that's a handy one for the Tigers. The low trajectory kick, that might be the goal, Williamstown, mm. Matty. Yeah. Kick out Sylvester, kicks a helicopter floater. It was like a pie floater that you get in South Australia. It was an absolute shocker. Coming up, forcing the turnover, was picking. He goes short and finds his captain, Brett Johnson. On that occasion, it could cost him a goal. And he comes now, Johnson, the captain, from 48 metres, floats it towards goal. The breeze brings it back. The goal umpire is happy with it. Two-finger salute. Uh, another one of those pie floaters. He should be dragged from kicking out duties. Williamstown affecting the turnover once again. Jolly, handball in board. Short kick from McKenzie. Lots of Williamstown players around it. A pack of seagulls. They raffled it. Matty Little comes up with it 40 metres out from goal. Jared Sylvester just can't take a trick from the kickouts. No, he can't. He's just got a bit more oh, discipline. 50 metres, it's a goal. Against Sylvester. So he's showing a bit of his anger there. He's disappointed, and that's definitely not what you want to do for your side. And the Coburg boys, not happy with him at all. So Little to the goal square from point blank range, just pops it into the back of the net. Behind the goals here at Burbank Oval. He's involved for Williamstown, trying to break away, but giving away a tackle, a uh, free kick was Caruso for a high tackle. So Williamstown have a chance on the half-back flank. And there's the sire, and so quarter time, Williamstown grab the lead when it counts the most. 4-3-27 over Coburg Tigers, 3-6-24. And then playing two versus three the following week. I certainly will. The finals have started early. That, that early goal that we missed, was that Graham, the one that he stabbed through? 
It's big Ruckman. Yes, it was. Here we go. Two Ruckman kicked the goal. Very good lock. Sorry on to Dix. the Pettifer family. The goal to Graham. Dan Hill on double X. The ball's back out of the centre. Lockie Dix doing his best work. He's got the memory bank going. Fortunato Caruso got it out to that man, Graham, who handballed over the top. Coppin in the back, Shelton playing to the umpire. Kick away by Easton Wood, centre of the ground, street all on his own. He bounds towards it but couldn't pick it up. Coming through for Coburg was Keo. Off the ground was McElane. Then Keo dives on it. He could be in trouble here. But he knocked it out. Right half forward. Williamstown going forward. Gallia picks it up. Then handballs over the back there to Jolly. Into an open goal but kicks into the wards of the pocket. And Cloak is led to the footy by Rance. But it dribbles over the band line and out of bounds. Five metres around from Williamstown's goal in the right forward pocket. Matt Ward also in there. Ball bounced up. Throw a blanket over 26 players. Ball hits the bottom of the pack. Coming through, Lockwood on the left boot, around the body. He's got it. So another mistake from Coburg through Sylvester, and they stretch the lead out to nine points. Williamstown with that goal from Lockwood. Howard on the left boot, goes into the centre. McElwain's involved. Tigers now going for a run. Long inside 50. Here's a chance for Putt now on Cloak. He had the better position, but he couldn't hold on. Gazzo gets rid of his opponent ah. and kicks it off the deck. Good strength, Gazzo got rid of Beaumont and gave the Tigers a goal they sorely needed. 4-7-31, trailing Williamstown 5-6-36. Immediately by Cartledge, plants as the umpire, ball spills free, Carnell towards the face of goal, bouncing footy, up and under, Shelton couldn't get it, towards the goal line, Rance, wheels around, needs to kick it on his left, but he had no left, then he handballed it to Timmendale on his right. Unbelievable finish, Greg Timmendale on his right boot, you don't see that every day of the week. And they regain the lead, the Coburg Tigers. They lead by just one solitary point, but a big couple of minutes of play there from the Tigers, boys. They're back in the game in a while, just a half with the reserves last week. Hill kicks into Street. Street goes further afield and finds Bowman. Kicking a half out. Player goes to ground for Williamstown, but Cloak doesn't. He takes a mark inside 50. He's got a little one. Loose checking. Ward, who went to ground. Cloak popped up and took the mark, and then he found Johnson, and Johnson won't let him down. He kicks a goal. And all of a sudden, Williamstown back in front now by four points on the Moorabbin Handyman Steel Supply scoreboard. Moorabbin Handyman Steel Supply scoreboard. Four-point lead to the Tigers. Now, running around, Oakley Nichols getting a lot of the footy. Handball came in. That was from Keo. And there's the siren. And half-time at Burbank Oval. Williamstown, 6-8-42 over the Coburg Tigers, 5-8-32. From 38, make that, for the Williamstown team two goals to Johnson one each to Little Gallia Lockwood and Bowman and then goal win there to the Roosters and making life hard for the Cats now and Box Hill dancing more than Boyan's season with a 13-14-92 win over the Boyan 7-14-56 so all in front of the Boyan's going forward now but the umpires bounce the ball and Cartledge goes up high but Williamstown get the takeaway they do indeed Williamstown coming forward Cloak takes the mark and tried to ride the bump, might have got one high play on to the umpire. Turning and weaving was how it picked oh. up the footy, then handballed past his teammate in horn. Play on says the umpire. Jackson shrugged the tackle and then got one high. No, gave it gave the, one too uh, high. The don't argue got him high, hit him in the face, so it'll be a free kick to Ben Jolly at left half forward. 45 metres out. And it's going to O'Keefe in two metres with the wind down here at Burbank Oval. They lead by four points, Williamstown. Guy O'Keefe starts it right. Right to the goal line, it's gone through. They've run into each other on the goal line, the Coburg boys. Jared Sylvester not happy with Cartledge. Back into the middle of Burbank Oval. And with a little right foot kick, and they're looking for Little. He's on a hot long lead, and he takes the mark in front of Sylvester. Goal, it's just a little bit of a lack of experience there, and Matt Little, he'd be a big chance to kick this. Well, he isn't, Matty, because he's dropped it low, but Cloak was at the back. Keo missed it, and Cloak marked just two metres in from the bit. From the goal line, turn around and put it through. Bad blow for the Coburg Tigers. Good fortune for Williamstown. They move 16 points up on the Moorabbin Handyman Steel Supply scoreboard. Well, that's... It's going to go the way of Williamstown. Well, I will say right here and right now, Sean Higgins will get two weeks. So, oh, Jackson's hands. Chance yeah, for good Jolly. Tackle. Good tackle there on Picken. Jackson trying to make up for his earlier miss. And now the umpire says, oh, I will ball it up. Right on the 50 metre arc, just 10 Ooh. metres in from the boundary. A bit going on right there now. The umpire saying stay out of it. And the other umpire's picked out a free kick. And 
it's going to go the way of Williamstown. Well, I will say right here and right now, Sean Higgins will get two weeks. So, oh, jeez, Dan, don't say that. <laughs> Higgins goes off the field, but not before he can if play a very man, good pass to Rose. If our man Cameron over there has picked that up on the camera, he will get two weeks, Sean Higgins. Probably we'll keep it under the hat. Innocent till, yeah, uh, innocent till uh, proven or sustained. Yeah, maybe just <laughs> trying to start a lawnmower. Rose comes in. And can he make the most of it? He can. It was a wobbly old kick. It's the story of the day with this wind blowing across the field. But Rose gets the goal. And all of a sudden, there's a handy break for Williamstown. 9 9 63 over Coburg Tigers. 5 9 39. Moorabbin handyman still supplies the scoreboard. Well, they've got a little handy break now, haven't they? Uh, they've just opened up the game. Through Oakley Nichols. Chain of handballs. Here's a go for Hyde. He's involved. Gets it over to Jackson. Gazzo was in there too. Kick it out in front of Graham and he can take the mark. Make You've got to go out and do that if you're going to be a top outside. So Putt, he must not let them down. He's got to put this through the middle. Left to right. And he's celebrating. Good goal. They needed it. 19 points the difference on Moorabbin handyman. Steel supply scoreboard. Graham in the ruck. Decided not to jump. Meyer won it out. But only as far as Tivendale. Going forward for Coburg. Flicked over the back of the pack. Play on says the umpire stack. Had it, lost it, 360 spin, holding the ball. And Coburg will have a free kick, 40 metres out, directly in front. It's going to the captain, Paul Shelton, and here's their chance to get back into this game. And I don't know if they got the clearance. Shelton comes in, left, right, goal to the Tigers. Captain, my captain. And they're back now, 51, play 64, just a 13-point ball game. His putt on his knees, sliding towards the boundary line. Comes up with it. Scotty Meyer stands the mark for Williamstown. Putt goes short. Ooh, oh, 50. Galea just ran straight through Tivendale, yeah, and it'll metres. be a 50 metre penalty. And Greg Tivendale put this one in the book, boys, from 15 metres out for Greg Tivendale. Only uh, Sparklam. From 25 metres out, only a short 50 metre penalty, but nonetheless, Greggy Tivendale bangs it straight through the middle. That's his second, and the margin is cut to seven points. We'll go to Mike Matthews around the grounds. He kicked out towards Hill. Hill kicked further up the ground looking for Street. The ball will bounce. That'll make it hard for him. The taken away for Williamstown on the left boot, spearing in and finding Rose. I don't know if it was intentional. He'll so be uh, keen to make amends. Yeah, he's closer in, Matty, but you're right. And this is a, a little bit easier, a little bit less of an angle. He certainly would want to make amends, and he does there. Dead eye, 13 point lead on the Moravan Handyman Steel Supply scoreboard. That is to Williamstown. 23 minutes played. Paddy Rose, he's uh, such a clever player. Just the ability to to sneak out into the you know forward pocket, take a mark. He's out from goal, goes in short, punched away. Back of the pack, Shelton trying to come up with it. Caruso's also in there. Play on says the umpire putt hailing a cab, and the umpire says, "Yeah, mate, we'll have a bounce." 15 metres out from goal, bit of toing and froing, bit of jump and punching going on down there in the pocket. The umpire will break it all up and just bounce it. Throw a blanket over. 20 players are in the left forward pocket. We've played 25 and a half minutes here in this third term at Burbank Oval. And it's a free kick, is it? It's going the way of Coburg. So if the jumper punches have obviously resulted in a free kick to Coburg. And they have a chance to bring it back to just seven points. Kick at goal. Looks like Shelton on its way. Straight through the middle. They know how long's left, Coburg. Going short, Coughlin. Finds Jackson at left half back, who dinks one over the top and finds Cartledge. And there's the three-quarter time siren, as you just heard through the effects mic. And at three-quarter time, it's Williamstown, 10, 12, 72. They lead Coburg, 9, 11, 65 on the... Mike Matthews over there, our Round the Grounds reporter. Oh, he gets don't all, forget him. He gets the mentions all the time, mate. Dominating that third quarter. We'll need more VFL scores coming for you. That's a good point, Dan, because we're be upsetting uh, in a big game over Casey Scorpions at the moment. But we'll keep you up to date with that. Here's Dan Hill with the last quarter. Jackson, base of the pack. Chance for Coburg to come away. Street put his body on the line, laid the smother, but Tivendale comes up with it. At left half back, goes up towards half forward. Coming out to meet it was Collins. Bounced off his knees. Ball comes towards the wing. Pick and leads the race. Tivendale follows up. Picking over his shoulder in the path of Johnson. Terrific stuff. Johnson oh. run down by Collins. Holding the ball. Advantage will be paid. But then he says, I'll oh, pull it up. Coglin, smart footy. Just gives it to the top of the goal square. Putt at the back of the pack. Go off the ground, son. He got legged. Umpire, free kick. Good decision. 
Chris Bishop picked them. <laughs> It'll be the top of the goal square. Good metres out. Surely he'll put it through to tie it all up, as Lockie said. And he comes from 20 metres out, straight through the middle. The Coburg fans are very happy with that indeed. That's his second. Hill Supply scoreboard sees it 10-11 apiece. Tigers trying to break through. Jackson did somehow. McElane, here they go again. Tigers, Tivendale on the run. Tivendale goal! 50 metre drop punt. We've seen that before at Tigerland. And now it is 11-11-77. Tigers leading Williamstown 10-11-71. But the ball comes over the top to Coglin for Coburg. Connors at left half forward. Goes long into the pocket on the lead. Taking the mark, one-hander. Lovely work from Collins who plays on without hesitation. Snaps around the body. He's put it straight through the middle. Coburg lead by two goals in the final term against the top of the table, Williamstown. We have played six minutes in this final term. Andy Collins, terrific work. Great. Came out from O'Keefe, you stack, ran into trouble, turn it over. Jackson's got it, He's runs away, good. right boot. Here's a go for Carnell. Takes a mark out in front. It's a bit worse than a 45 degree angle. On his left boot, Carnell comes in and makes it 19 points. Makes it hard for Williamstown. Damn. Now can he go to Johnson, his captain? He will. It's a short kick, Johnson will get it. And he is about 60 metres out, make it 55, slight angle. Low pass, good oh, well string done. coming in. Take a good grab for Williamstown. Is Rose 44, and in the VFL, uh, VFL, Werribee Tigers still all over the Casey Scorpions 18 8 to the Casey Scorpions 9 9. Big upset there, maybe a big upset here. Rose kicks to the goal line, goal. has a float over the back. It has a bit of luck. The Coburg Tigers defenders missed it. And Five. running through the mark, Jill Meyer. Yeah. And then the handball comes to Connors, who goes long to the top of the goal square. Timondale, the Carnell at the front, has taken the mark directly in front, 25 metres out. Player, Carnell and uh, quality player. Carnell from 30 metres out, directly in front. Point blank range, he puts it straight through the middle. That's two in the space of five minutes for Nick Carnell. Heberg trying to run onto it, but Williamstown have the numbers. Oh, bottom of the pack, Caruso. He might have dragged it in. He shovels it out. That was well done. Handball by Putt wide towards the boundary line. And we'll have a throw in right next to the interchange gates. Bit of toing and froing going on here. Bit of beer, few headlocks. It's getting heated and fired up. Williamstown not happy. And the boundary umpires should throw it back in quickly. Lockie, you keep your eye on the fight, son. Yep. And I will watch the footy. And there's been a free kick. And there's a bit going on here. It's on for young and old. Bit of wrestling. There'll be a few fines there. But it's a free kick to Williamstown. Galley has thrown one there. Geez, there, there's a couple. It's, uh, Why would you with the finals just around the corner? Why would you? It's a free kick. And uh, look at He loves getting in there. <laughs> and Beaumont has the free kick from that resulting brawl. Ball goes up towards right half forward. Fisted away by Howard. Running on to it was Stretton and the ball dribbles over the boundary. Williamstown goal. It is back to 19 points. So... Could have been a handy behind. Myers wastes no time. Kicks inside 50 at the back, doing some roving, doing a banana kick at the goal, and putting it through. Cloak. That's Ward. No, the cloak, was it? Jason so. Cloak putting through a nice one. Opportunist goal there. And eight off that at half time. It's worked very well. White kick out. Not going too far though. Shelton. This will be a famous victory. His, his most enjoyable one as captain, you would think. Oh, to the nail. Up he goes. He's put on a show. I'm not finished yet, Tigers fans. Right next to each other and uh, very intense and watching this kick. They'd be happy as Tevendale comes in and puts it for and the Tigers are home. So what a split round this is. Ball comes long and wide, but only as far as Bauman, who's been very, very good today for Williamstown. Ball up towards half forward, coming out and taking the mark was O'Keefe. Certainty from there, Guy O'Keefe. The boy from Ocean Grove via the Geelong Falcons. Getting back in Rodney Eads' eyes when they need him. Maybe not this kick though across the centre of the ground. It's come undone. Tigers' wonderful mark, Rance, in front of Stretton. Took the big leap. And now a loose player, it's McElane. He should go over the top to Cartledge. He will. Cartledge will mark inside 50. That is the ball game. Let's see if Cartledge can make it a good weekend for him. Uh, his Coburg Tigers, his Richmond Tigers. Cartledge puts it through. Raises his arms in a V. He's played a good game today against the number one Ruckman, Peter Street. He's under pressure, handball across defensive 50, over the top to Hill. He'll it up the siren. And Coburg 
in a memorable victory here at Burbank Oval have defeated Williamstown on their home track for the first time in the 2008 season. 13-14-92 Williamstown to Coburg 16-14-110. The victors Coburg Tigers four to Tivendale in a magnificent performance. Two each to Cartledge and Putt, Shelton and Carnell and singles to Gazzo, Collins, Graham and Hyde. And the Coburg Tigers fans are giving a bit well, of a clap there. Nick Car Carnell, what a great win, mate. Yeah, it was super, mate. We, we come down here to do a job, and we both seen as reserves got it done today. You just stood tall. When they really put the pressure on you, you really just all as a team, collectively, uh, you know, ran hard at the footy and won each contest. That's um, we, we had a lot of river blokes in the middle of the team, and they're coming back, and they're super with they, you know, they get chopped, they do, do the job down here, and they give us a big chop out. Well done, Nick. Thanks, mate. Oh, Matty, maybe try that mic, see if you can get down the rooms with it. We'll see if we can uh, keep that one going. So the Williamstown goal kickers today, three to Rose, two to O'Keefe and Cloak, and singles to Bowman, Lockwood, Gallia and Little. And uh, that was Matt Lee with a small forward, uh, Nick Carnell, just after we've been speaking about him. Two goals all in the last quarter, Dan, and uh, a real ferocity around the packs along with Fortunato Caruso. They just showed the, showed the Williamstown players that they're going to have to work they wanted this win well that has been the big trouble for Coburg they have actually they've struggled here's All the right, song we'll take the Tigers song good on you Matt Matt Lee and grab anyone you can mate and come in whenever you like and what a famous weekend for the Tigers. Richmond yesterday in a magnificent victory over the Bombers, last gas stuff and then today Coburg Tigers. Boys, there, uh, boys I got Daniel Jackson here, what a great win mate, you just, just worked hard for four quarters and you got the result. Yeah it was fantastic, we uh, set ourselves during the week to just have a hard defensive game and keep them under pressure because it's such a quality side and the boys did it really well. The model from Richmond and Coburg, very similar, just the way you attack the footy right through at the contest. Yes, it's been a focus all year. Just attack the man, attack the ball, attack the game, run hard, tackle hard, do all those little things. And when we do it right, we play well. Last week we didn't do it right, we got flogged. So it shows that it works. Exactly. And Carnell was fantastic up forward in the last quarter, just kicking those two critical goals. He certainly was. He did a great job in the midfield earlier on in the game to go forward and be able to do that as well. It's just another string to his bow. And he's just a great player at the level. And um, I hope he keeps up during the year because he's a wonderful asset to our team. Well, it's uh, a, a big win for you in context of the season as well. Really puts you, uh, uh, cements that spot in the eight, but gives you a springboard for the remainder of the season. Well, that's right. Jade spoke about getting a win over the next couple of weeks. Got a few hard games, and then we got the run home. So if we can get this one, as we did, and keep going on that, we'll um, hopefully set ourselves up for finals. How have you assessed your own form over the last couple of weeks? Uh, yeah, it obviously, it does even flow, but to get that confidence back today, uh, yeah, it must be a good feeling. Yeah, well, first game back last week, it was just a good to get good to get a run under the belt despite the loss, and um, I felt I found form pretty quickly, so hopefully I can get myself back up the other team, but I really enjoy playing down here. It's always good fun, and um, especially with such a successful side. Well done, and uh, congratulations. Cheers. There you go, Matt Lee with Daniel Jackson down in the Coburg Tigers room just after they sung the song, and if you've just tuned in, we're going through to 5 o'clock on Double X, 16, 11 a.m., VFL Football, the Elite Meets the Community.